issue is not that you are not blessed. Your issue is not that God has not endowed you. Your issue is your identity. Because we gravitate always in the direction of our dominant thought. Have you ever looked in the mirror and you didn't like what you saw? Have you ever, you know, stared in the mirror and you're looking at the mirror, and the mirror is looking back at you and you just didn't appreciate what you are seeing in the mirror? Now, for some it may sound strange, for some of that it, it may sound familiar. Now, I, I didn't know this could be true until I started working with young people. Because each time I look in the mirror, I, somehow, I always, I always like what I see. But, but I, I've, in my work with young people, I've met some young people, especially ladies who told me they look in the mirror and they hate to look in the mirror because I don't like what they're seeing. Now, the question is, what could be wrong? Could it be the mirror? Of course, the answer is no. The issue is not that they aren't seeing well. The issue is what is programmed already in their mind. Let's go straight to the scripture. Genesis chapter 32, verse 26. It says, and he said, let me go. The angel, an angel was talking to Jacob. He said, let me go for the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. That's desperation. And so he said to him, what is your name? He said, Jacob, supplanter. And he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have struggled with God and with men, and you have prevailed. You struggle with God and with men, and you have prevailed. Now, now uh, the, the, the key point, I, I could bring out so many things there, but the, the focus, let me just focus right now. The focus there is what the angel did versus what Jacob requested for. Jacob said, bless me, otherwise I won't let you go. Jacob was desperate. He, he's been through struggles. He struggled the whole of his life. I, I don't know if you've been there before where you feel like, you know what? I've had enough. I, I've had it. I'm tired. I'm just tired of struggling. I'm tired of, I'm tired of this challenge. I'm tired of jumping from one relationship to another. I think, you know, when I enter this relationship, I think that, okay, finally God has answered my prayer. Uh, he's going to walk this time around and in six months or one year, we have an issue and he moves on or she moves on. And this is the sixth one. I'm tired. Oh God, I'm tired. Have you been there before? Uh, yours may not be relation. Yours could be finances. You feel like finally, oh, finally it's going to happen this time. And you watch that project or that business or that job disappear into thin air to your shock and to your amazement. Have you, have you been there before? Jacob got to that point where he was tired. He was, he was tired. More like, I've had enough. And then he finally met an angel. An angel wrestles with him. And then the angel says, listen, it's time, let me go. Jacob holds on to the angel saying, no, no way. No way. Finally, I got my chance to turn my life around. You are asking me to let you go without blessing me. You won't go until you bless me. I'm tired of this cursed life. Bless me before you go. An angel, in response to that strong, passionate plea for a blessing, asked what I could have thought was a lame question. What's your name? What are, you, are you kidding me? What's my name? I'm asking for something as serious as a blessing. And then you are asking for my name. But, but Jacob was polite and, you know, courteous enough to respond. And Jacob said, my name is Jacob. He owned up. My name is a supplanter. Because Jacob means a supplanter. My name is a thief. My name is a froster. Uh, that's my name. He owned up. And then the angel said, from today you will no longer be called a supplanter, a first star, or Jacob. You will now be called Israel, a prince. And then the angel disappears. That, that's, that's very instructive. You see, I, I read that scripture so many times until one day, finally, the Spirit of God led me to pause and ponder. And I paused and I pondered. I, I was wowed by that experience. Now, now you, you, let me break it down for you. So Jacob asked for a blessing. And then the angel says, what's your name? 
you no longer be called Jacob but Israel. What happened there was the angel pointed to the fact that Jacob, your issue is not the blessing. Your issue is not that you are not blessed. Your issue is not that God has not endowed you. Your issue is not that you are not beautiful enough. Your issue isn't that you are not handsome enough. Your issue isn't that, in quote, you are not lucky. Your issue is your identity. What you are struggling with is not a curse. It's an identity problem. And so, Jacob, I'm going to change. I'm going to break that blessing blocker. Your identity is what is blocking the blessing from manifesting. You have the blessing, but it's not... Is not manifesting. It's like a tap that is not turned on. Yet the tank is filled with water. And so the angel changes his identity from Jacob to Israel. And then that turned loose, the blessing. I don't know who you are this, this moment right now, watching this broadcast. I don't know what image, what I don't know what you're struggling with. You probably think you are cursed. You are you are, you are, you, you know, you are, you are operating under a curse. You probably look at yourself in the mirror and you feel like, my life is cursed. If it isn't cursed, why, you know, why have I been going through all that I've been going through? I mean, relationship is not working. Um, um, uh, job is not working. Business is not working. This is not working. That is not working. What a cursed life. Yeah. Most times it might not just be a curse. Most times it might be an image that you are struggling with, an identity problem. You feel, you feel in your heart, you, you feel, you've taken on the, the image or the identity of a failure, of a cursed person, based on maybe one or two challenges. Maybe you had an experience once, twice, and a third time, and unconsciously, because this image are taken unconsciously, nobody will wake up and decide, you know what, mm, I think I'm going to take up an image of a failure. Or a customer. No, it happens unconsciously. It's an unconscious programming. And once it becomes a programmed state or condition, you repeat the cycle. You repeat the cycle. Whether it's in relationship or whatever, you repeat the cycle. I've seen people who gravitate from one abusive relationship to another repeatedly. Repeatedly. Until they had an encounter, this kind of encounter. And they were able to identify the root of the problem. You see, you cannot, you can't, you can't, you can't rise above what you believe to be true of yourself. In relationship, in job, in business, you can't rise. Each time, each, each time you want to rise, maybe you, you hear a powerful message or motivational, whatever, that stirs you up and you want to rise above, you finally decide, you know what, I'm going to break this limit. You may take one or two steps, but that image will bring you back to that level. The first step is alter that image. Change what you believe to be true of yourself. Now, let me tell you something. You were made and designed by God in His image. That already makes you a winner. By design, you were designed to be a winner. You are designed to dominate. You are designed to rule. You are designed to reign. Now, does that mean that you know, life will not throw you challenges. Life will throw you challenges. But you see, challenges makes you stronger. Challenges are not designed to make you give up on yourself and take on a self-defeating image. And if you have, you can begin to alter it from today. And all you need to do is to look yourself in the mirror and tell yourself, you know what, I'm a blessed man. I'm a blessed woman. Only the best is good enough for me. I'm a child of God. I walk in victory. I'm a new creation. Oh, I'm special. My life is blossoming. Regardless of the contradiction, you've got to be willing to look foolish. Why saying all these things? Because your circumstances will tell you, how can you be saying what is not true? But the reality is that you have to say it before you can see it manifest. You have to say it. Now, as you are saying it, two things are happening. It is affecting your image, your subconscious image. And you are also engaged in the process of creation because words create reality. So, you, so, so two things are happening at the same time. So you, you have to be disciplined to the process of speaking what you want to see in your life. Okay, I'm going to stop here right now. Feel free to comment. I, I'll respond to all the comments. You know, uh, feel free to share your experience 
um, um, what impacted you the most in this message? What line struck you the most in this message? And um, if you have anything personal to share with me, go straight to my DM and I will respond as swiftly as possible. My name is Lawrence Onochia, your partner in progress. Have a wonderful week. Bye for now.